I just hit the mute button, the red button, instead of the hang up button, which was also red. Mm. And I suddenly realized they were still on the line, those four people, and I could still hear them talking. So maybe I'm morally bankrupt, but I'm a curious person. So I don't know what you would do, Jeremy, but I felt like, okay, I gotta listen in. Kevin, you tell a story in your book that involved accidentally pressing the mute button instead of the hang-up button, and that experience changed the trajectory of your career. Tell us that story. Wow. Yes. A matter of fact, it's chapter one. I mean, it's uh, hmm. this is a tough one. Every, everyone in business gets kicked in the teeth. Okay, so like this is a big kick in the teeth moment. Sometimes you get a you know, kick in the front teeth, sometimes you get a kick in the whole set of teeth. This was a this was a kick in the set of teeth and you never forget the dates. It was 2012, August 18th. I'll never forget the date. You never forget the dates of really good things in your life. You know, when your kids were born, when you got married, for some of my friends when they got divorced. <laughs> <laughs> well, you remember dates and um you know, when you think about a button, everyone thinks nuclear war, right? Button is like what thing. think. This was nuclear to me, okay, as a person. And when you get a kick in the teeth, you can either ignore it, which I've done some of that, lots of the times actually. You can run for cover and maybe just go get a job somewhere. Or you can face it and look in the mirror. Well, on this one, I was at the Idea Factory, 18 people. You know, many times we had to worry about making payroll and this was a chance for us to double the size of our agency. And we went through this long three month process of creative with a big Atlantic Canadian company that people listening to this would know by name and I will never name. So I'm not going to say who it was, not important, but the only people that got treated worse than salespeople are ad agencies because... Mm -hmm we've got to do so much spec work. So we went through this dog and pony show for three months. We're down to the final phase of this. It's ourselves and another agency in Nova Scotia. I'm on this call, which I thought was just checking the boxes. Yeah. And I was by myself, no creative people. And there was four people on their end, which I thought was a bit strange for a tick in the box call, but they were super nice. And honestly, Jeremy, for... The next 15, 20 minutes, they were throwing confetti over Idea Factory. We love the way you work. We love your creative ideas. We love the fact that you guys got the strategic insights. I mean, I was popping the cork and the champagne. I couldn't wait to get off the call to go outside because this was going to double the size of our agency. You know, three million in top line revenue, six million. I couldn't wait. I was already celebrating in my head. So as we were getting off the call, the normal goodbyes, I just, you know, it was before Zoom calls and all this technology that we have now. This was like these ugly conference call units. And I just hit the mute button, the red button, instead of the hang up button, which was also red. Mm. And I suddenly realized they were still on the line, those four people. And I could still hear them talking. So maybe I'm morally bankrupt, but I'm a curious person. So I don't know what you would do, Jeremy, but I felt like, okay, I got to listen in for at least a minute. Like, I have to. And what I heard over the next minute, which maybe was less than that, was these same people that were throwing confetti at me and making me truly believe with my happy ears that only hear the good news and miss all the warning signs. I thought we won the business. They were all now literally like schoolyard bullies in the backyard. Um... There's not a chance we're going with an agency in Newfoundland. It's too far away. I'd rather go with the one uh, down the road. Uh, hey, John, can you push Kevin to see if you can get him to understand how he got this production cost so cheap? See if we can go back to the incumbent and find some more money. And I listened to all this happen. And then I hit the right red button. And it was over. And I was alone as a leader of 18 people not even feeling fit to be a leader that I missed all these signs. And for a few minutes, I was angry at those four people for lying. And then I quickly realized that 
it wasn't them, it was me. Uh, and it was because the way I've sold was about persuading, pushing, mm -hmm. convincing. And when you do that, people can't be truthful to you. So these four people couldn't be truthful to Kevin Casey because I wouldn't have went away. I would have been like a stalker, following up, circling back, please, whatever you need. So I had to look at myself and um, I didn't tell part of my team for months. I just said they went with another agency because I was too embarrassed to say the apparent leader of the company missed every sign. Um, and that was probably the moment that I said, I can't do this for another 23 years uh, because living like this and selling like this felt like a life sentence, not a life. And um, that was the moment when I looked in the mirror and said, I got to change things up. And I think it was the unofficial start of on selling, but I didn't know it then. I just knew I had to do something different because um, it was my fault. And by the way, those four people, nothing against them because everyone listening to this, if I asked them, they would say they lie to salespeople. I'm a salesperson. I lie to salespeople. <laughs> we have to because it's self-protection. They got the first four copies of my book and they're in two different companies now and they're not where they were and I didn't do it out of vengeance. I just said thank you and I will never mention their names. That's not important but they didn't do anything wrong. I was the one that did something wrong and that was when I learned that I've got to find a different way to sell or I've just got to get out of this business and you know go in the mountains and be a monk or something. Mm -hmm.